I'm Nick Forster. You're listening to E-Town. Uh, Shovels and Rope are going to be back later in the show. And coming up, Nick Clark, a uh, young singer from Denver who's committed to sharing his music with young people. Um, Nick had his first record come out on a label called Little Village, which is a product of a mission-driven nonprofit organization called the Little Village Foundation. And their goal is to find and fund the recording of little-known, undiscovered, or forgotten American roots musicians. They cover a huge range of music. Uh, they cover all the costs. They give all the proceeds back to the artists while helping them gain a new audience. Little Village was founded by Jim Pugh, and Jim is somebody we met years ago when he was playing organ in Robert Cray's band. Uh, some of you may know that Jim has also played and recorded with a ton of other people, including B.B. King and Etta James and John Lee Hooker and Boz Skaggs and Van Morrison. Anyway, uh, like us, Jim sees music as a way to bring people together, and uh, he's here with us this week from his home in San Ynez Valley in California. Please welcome to E-Town, Jim Pugh from Little Village Foundation. It's perfect. You really think I'm this short? You're going to sit first. Oh. Well, we're off to a good start. Jeez. I'm embarrassed. Here we go. Hi. What about shuffles and rope? I mean, that was, that was shovels and rope. Jim Pugh, Little Village Foundation, welcome to E-Town. Um, first, a little background. Uh, you grew up in Chicago, pretty much. Is that right? Suburban Chicago. Suburban I'm careful Chicago. to say to Chicago musicians, but yeah. yeah, suburban Chicago. And how old were you when you first started playing music? First started actually? Oh, I think third or fourth grade. Yeah. Yeah. And did you uh, have a band in high school and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, we somebody discovered, somebody's sister went to the University of Chicago, and when we were about in fifth grade, somebody gave us a Muddy Waters record, and it was on, you know? Yeah. It's like all of a sudden I didn't want to play Bach, I wanted to play Otis Spann, and yeah. I spent the rest of my life trying to do that. Oh, that's cool. And what about gigging? Was that, um, you started playing gigs in, in Chicago? Not really, no. Yeah. I mean, my musical experience really started when I moved to California. Yeah, which you did to go to school, or what did you do? What well, I went to school for a while, and then I dropped out, and uh, I went to the University of Fillmore Street, if any of you know, <laughs> a stack of dimes in a jukebox, an older <laughs> gentleman yelling at me. That's, <laughs> that's how I learned to play. Yeah. Well, it's so cool because your musical journey, as I mentioned, um, brought you from there into this into this niche, uh, this R and B blues niche, where you found your found your spot and you made a real contribution on a lot of play, a lot of records and and touring with a lot of people. Um, like me, I know that you got to travel a fair amount and you played a lot of different places, and along the way, you got to see that music brings people together. Absolutely. I, um, I, I should tell you, the nothing I would say, um, I, I don't mean it to sound profound, although, you know, <clears throat> in my natural born inbred arrogance, I might sound like that. It's like, hey, you know, B.B. King is really good. You should listen to him sometime. You know, it's not like that at all. But and there's nothing original here. But I really early on in my life heard the commonality of music, which I think is emotion. And there's only, how many plots are there? Like seven or eight? I mean, so you can sort of figure it out. And, and I played in California, I played a bunch of different styles of music. I played Mexican music for a long time when I first lived in California. And I have a, I listen to that and it sounds just like Etta James to me. And, you know, the mighty clouds of joy sound just like uh, Aki Kumar playing, singing in, in Hindi. It's just I suffer it's some form of dyslexia, I think. So I don't I, think so. I don't think it's dyslexia. I think it's uh, I think it's like X-ray vision. You know, you get to actually see into the core of the music and find that commonality. I, I consider it a talent. Yeah. I do. I mean, yeah. I don't know about playing the piano. That's all sort of a parlor trick. You know, I'm not really sure that I'm a, that I'm sure I'm sure I'm not a virtuoso. But that that's something I sort of a skill I figured out to keep from starving. But this thing of really hearing what people do with music. And another thing I'll say, I'm leading this thing, <laughs> but you know, the thing is, is that it's really true, is that I have found that I can play a bunch of different styles of music and people can come together and play it together, different styles. 
I lo- if I could make mariachi, children's mariachi records, and play on gospel quartet records, that's what I would do for the rest of my life. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. Because that stuff is so soulful, and it's joyful also. You know, it's about uplift, and it's about community. And those things are important. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and I have... I really have this heartfelt. I mean, I could. I don't know how long the interview is. I could digress. It's almost over. It's yeah. a, I could we're, digress. We're just about out of time. Move along. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. here, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> and well, for example, feel Nick, free. Yeah, go ahead. Nick Clark. <laughs> Nick Clark actually was a little village artist. Nick is Clark a trem- yeah. is. <laughs> it's a tremendous story, and it um, and he's a tremendous artist, and there's such emotion and so much giving in it that it is. You could see it a mile away for someone like me. I just went, he said he wanted to make a children's record. And I said, I got a record company for you. Make a children's yeah. record for Little Village. And just last week, he performed for the second time at Pittsburgh Children's Hospital in, in Pittsburgh. And for the, in the children's world for these kids. And it was unbelievable, the response. And, and it's the second time he's done it. Um, and it's his passion. And... Um, I tell people, I just told Nick, I said, you know, doing things like that, helping people do things like that, it's like, forget playing at Albert Hall. I'll take helping people do things like that. At my age, at this time, it means something much more than, I don't know, Madison Square Garden or being, you know, some, I, I, don't, I don't think I'd look good in spandex and hair plugs. <laughs> what do you think? I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> I would agree with that, but... No, I love, I love what you're saying. And I think that one of the things we always talk about when we have interviews on E-Town is the idea that somebody started something. Like, um, we want to celebrate individual efforts that make a difference, that, that help people, that make the world a better place. We celebrate that and have for years. Um, that point of inflection is important to me and to our listeners, which is there was a moment when you thought, okay, I can make a record company and I'm going to raise some money so that I can do this at no cost to the artists and I'm going to cast a wide net and I have people singing in Spanish and in Hindi and doing blue, you know, I'm going to, you had a vision and you made it a reality. So what was the first thing you did when you decided you were going to do that? Well, it was a process. I mean, I worked for almost 25 years with Robert Cray. And before that, I'd worked for 10 years with Etta James. I'd been traveled. I'd raised a family and saw them half the time. And the other half, I was on the road. And when I stopped playing with Robert at 60 years old, I guess it was, yeah, I said, nobody wants a 60-year-old piano player. This part of my life is over. And plus, I don't want to get in the back of a bus and ride to New York. So I said, what am I going to do? And I called a friend of mine, and he said, figure out what your passion, and it's like a cliche, but he said, figure out what you love, and we'll figure out a way for you to make a living. I'll help you. We'll, we'll do this. And so I got a job. I got a volunteer job at a botanic garden where I live in Santa Inez, and it's like 40 acres. And I was the only person that worked there pretty much in the morning and early afternoon. And they brought in a semi full of mulch, a semi-trailer, and they said, you know, here. And they gave me a wheelbarrow and, and a pitchfork, and I spent f- four months thinking about what the hell am I going to do? I'm married, I got four kids, I got a mortgage, and I don't have a job, and I got to figure out what to do. And I slowly, through this process, kind of realized that my passion is seriously music helping people, and I don't mean helping people in a big way, but in a small way. I like doing things on a one-on-one, you know, the simple thing of helping somebody with their groceries, things like that. And the third thing that I like is diversity. I've always been, it's from living in San Francisco and living in Oakland, and I'm sure it's obviously the same here as it is in a lot of places. The diversity really makes me happy. So I just wanted to do something that incorporated all those three of those things and having a nonprofit record company. And also, I've spent a career of being taken advantage of <laughs> just because that's the nature of the business, really, isn't it? Wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, well, then, you I know, so. You need to talk to my so. lawyer. But yeah. anyway... <laughs> We're all getting ripped off, but uh, you've seen your Spotify check lately? Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. So, and this was the thing. The record company, the artist gets everything. The artist owns everything. The record company owns nothing, and they, 
and they are not owed anything. It's freely given. And I wow. go around and try to convince people to trust me that I'll spend it the right way, which um, it, it, honestly, yeah. it's worked out okay. Yeah, it sounds great. Well, Jim, I, I also just want to ask you to share, you, you touched on it briefly, but, but um, you made your vision manifest. You found somebody, a wingman, who could help you make it happen. You've, you touched on the diversity in the range of music, but um, you, t you said there's gospel music, there's mariachi music, there's singing in Spanish, singing in Hindi, there's folk music, there's blues. Um, what am I missing? Gospel music? Uh, what other things have you recorded? I don't know. I've, I've had an amazing life. Just this last week, on Monday, what day is today? Sunday. On Monday and Tuesday, I was in Berkeley, California, mixing a cartoon orchestra. It's an orchestra that specializes in nothing but playing cartoon music from the 20s and 30s. And then on Wednesday, <laughs> me with my white, you know, alabaster Episcopalian ass was in a, <laughs> was in a, a, a documentary that's being made by Chris Strackwitz, by Arhuli, on the history of black music in Oakland. There's a quartet that I play with, and I've recorded you know, the Sons of the Soul Revivors. I played with them. And then I come here, and I hear this fabulous music, a fabulous community of people, and I feel so blessed and so grateful because... You know, when you find something to do, if you're lucky enough, to, if you find something that you love to do, it's not work. People go, I don't know how you're able to do all these things. I'm making 10 records at once. It's like you. But obviously, if it's a passion, yeah. it doesn't seem that hard. Yeah. Well, listen, we are, we are happy that you took the chance. We're happy that you got off the road and can remember your children's names. <laughs> we're, uh, we're happy that you uh, made a commitment on behalf of musicians and gave them something that no musician has ever had, ever, which is an opportunity to make a record in which they don't have to put up the money and they don't owe the record company anything and they own their own material. That has never happened before no, until you did it. Thank so you. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Jim Pugh, Little Village Foundation. Thanks so much, Jim. Thank you very much.